Hello, I'm Martin Fenska and welcome to the first episode of Let's Play King's Bounty Armored Princess. So, some of you might be surprised that I decided to start the series about the game that's at this point more than 10 years old, but since I finished the King's Bounty 2 series, uh, that, um, well, to be honest, let's be honest, King's Bounty 2 had has nothing to do with the original games and was at least for me quite disappointing i had this itch to like return to the original games and um, just enjoy king's bounty once again uh, and now i finally decided to actually do it uh, i decided to play armored princess which is the second game in the series i'm not counting the original game the the one from like 1991 or something um i'm talking about the the games from Katauri Interactive. Uh, the reason why I'm not starting with The Legends, the first game in the series, is that I have no reason to return to that game. I managed to finish that game on impossible difficulty without losses. Uh, and uh, for me, there really is nothing to do, uh, nothing more to do. I was thinking about maybe trying to go for, for impossible no losses victory with all classes, but it's just way too repetitive. Uh, with, uh, in Armored Princess, I managed to finish the game a long time ago on Impossible, but not without losses. So that's what I want to try now. I'm not sure if it's possible. I think it should be, maybe, uh, with the exception of some boss fights. I'm not sure about that, but I will definitely try uh, so that's the goal for this series. Before we start, just in case someone likes uh, the game when you see mm, when I'm playing it, um, if you decide to buy it, there are two options. There is either standalone King's Bounty Armored Princess or there is King's Bounty Cross Worlds, which I'm using. And if you decide to buy the game, go with Cross Worlds because with the Armored Princess, uh, you get the of course, the full Armored Princess campaign, you get some content on top of that. So it's uh, by far the better option. But well, back to the series. Um, for those who don't know the series at all, uh, just a few words about like what happened in the previous game, because there will be some uh, some hints on like what happened uh, during the story of the previous game. We can actually read it here. So years pass, and once again the world of Andoria faces a terrible foe. The Archdemon Baal has returned to avenge his double defeat. This time he is thoroughly prepared and has chosen the perfect time to strike. Uh, for the crown's defender, Bill Gilbert, which was the hero of uh, the of the first game, uh, is busy exploring new worlds and there is no one to defend the kingdom. The princess Amelia, now grown into a fine young woman, is sent into the strange world known as Tina in search of her mentor, Bill Gilbert, the last hope to save the kingdom of Dariona. So, Bill Gilbert, the hero of the first game, The Legend, uh, Princess Amelia was in that game as well as a young girl, so she now has grown up and will be taking over from Bill Gilbert as the main hero of this game. Um, let's jump into a new game. There are not really that many choices that we can make here. Uh, for no losses game. I think mage uh, is the base, best option, of course, impossible. And um, this the, the rest doesn't matter. We can choose an emblem here. Is there anything that will fit better? Eh, this one looks good. So mage, impossible. Princess Amelia, the charm doesn't really matter. On impossible, enemy is 170%. Uh, stronger, we will be getting 50% gold, 70% rage, and our pet dragon will be getting less experience, like 30% less. Um, in Legends, I'm not sure if they patched it or not, but I played it a long, long time ago when I managed to get the impossible no losses game. Uh, it was actually better to play as warrior, but I think especially in this game a lot, a lot more many things are different so i think mage is better and i think even in legends they actually changed a few mechanics that uh warrior is not uh, as overpowered as it used to be but it's not that important so mage impossible and 
next. Throughout the past decade, peace had reigned in the world of Endorian. A treaty was signed between the humans, elves, and orcs, and a union of equals led by Mark Leonard the Wise brought to peaceful resolution all conflicts across the land. The valiant knight, Bill Gilbert, having set Andoria on its happy course, became mentor to the young Princess Amelie, training her in the military arts, and as time passed, the princess grew into a fine young woman, and so Gilbert was called to leave the peaceful shores of Andoria in search of new worlds. But peace was always fragile. The fearsome arc demon Ball, once banished into the abyss by our famous knight, had meanwhile been undergoing his trials at the gates of hell. As form finally regained, Ball opened a portal into the world of Endoria, and within an instant, countless hordes of demons came pouring through, destroying all that was in their path. The elves and dwarves were first to fall having but little defense against such an overwhelming force. The loyal troops of King Mark were likewise quickly exhausted, and the battle-weary survivors withdrew to Kronberg to mount a last desperate stand at the gates of the capital. In a few short but terrible hours, catastrophe had brought Endora to the very brink of annihilation. <laughs> Okay, so that was the short intro. Uh, I think um, the audio was um, a little bit low, but um, I think this is like the only really cutscene that's in the game. Maybe there is one in the end, but um, uh, all of the other information, dialogues and everything we, uh, will be done through like pop-ups like this. So we don't really need audio for this game. So I have it on very low or the music is completely off. It gets quite repetitive. The game, especially in the mid, like mid game gets quite grindy. So I prefer not hearing the same audio over and over again. Uh, now, in the last uh, desperate effort, the king's forces have held the capital from the storm of invading demon troops, but the king has sent a message, messenger to you urgently, summoning you to the castle. Uh, go to the place and speak with your father. There is some, like the start of the game, it's scripted, and uh, it's always the same, but um, that's only like the first, I don't know, five minutes or something. Uh, so here's the castle. There is, we can go to some other uh, buildings here, talk with some people, but it's not really relevant. It's mostly just some uh, like lore that's um, um, that reminds you of of the previous game, uh, which we don't really need. We just want to know what's happening, uh, what's happening um, uh, right now. So we're gonna talk to our father, King Mark. My daughter Amelia, please sit with me. I want to have a serious talk with you. Oh, and one thing, there is quite a lot of reading in this game, and I'm not sure uh, if I want to read everything or not. Uh, that is probably a question for you guys. Do you want me to just focus on the goal, just the fighting, going without losses, and um, going through the dialogues quickly, or do you want me to focus a bit more on the role-playing part of the game as well, and just read all of the dialogues so that um, everybody knows uh, like the whole story and side quests, everything. And there is a lot in the game, like, like a lot, so it's up to you. We can, I don't know, focus on the main story and the most important side quest, the, the less important one we can skip. Uh, I will leave that up to you. For now, I'm gonna read and if it just slows down the game too much, I may just skip the dialogues, uh, at least those that I remember. Uh, and you will always have the option to just pause the game and read everything, or the, the game, or pause the video and read everything for yourselves. Um, we will see about that. But for now, as I said, I'm going to at least read the initial few dialogues so that everybody knows what's actually going on, why we are teleporting to, the, to a different world, things like that. So why have you called me, Father? Is there any... Uh, I can help, uh, probably anything I can do to help end the siege of our city? 
Yes, just outside the walls of Kronberg stands Baal's army, and we have nothing uh, with which to oppose them. Tomorrow our magicians will lose their strength and demons will storm the castle. Therefore, I make of you uh, two requests. I hope you will understand me and will not stand against the royal will. And that will depend on what you ask of me. First, as a father, I must protect you. Tonight the Dwarven airship arrives. It will bring you to our people in Morag. Uh, to our knowledge, this is the only land that has not suffered from demons invasion. Of course, there are the orcs of Murak uh, to contend with, but we have recently signed the peace treaty with them. With you will fly a platoon of the royal guards under uh, orders to protect you. Thank you, Father, for your concern, but I do hope that Cranberry will stand. We must protect our native home, not escape from it. What are the words? I'm proud that my daughter has grown so bold and so optimistic. I hope you maintain these qualities no matter what happens in the days ahead. However, this is not open to discussion. You are the only successor to the throne and must be kept safe at all costs. As king, it is my duty to share the fate of the people to whom I must answer. Uh, and what is your sec second request? I remember the clock of time, which was left to you by Bill Gilbert when he left for Tina. Yes, of course, I have it here with me. I promise to keep it until his return, uh, though I do not understand why he left it with me. So this are the, uh, the clock of time. Um, everything has its meaning, Amelia. This was not left to you as a simple toy. This magical clock belongs to the guardian of time who is sealed in uh, Gilbert's chest of rage. That was um, like a really strong artifact that uh, was a huge part of the like the battle strategy and tactics in the first game. And um, the guardian of time was one of the four like spirits that were that were inside of the of the chest of rage. And probably the most powerful one and the most broken wise when we are talking like game mechanics. These clocks change the pace of time around you. When you feel poorly, uh, time is accelerated that you may quickly recover. And when you are well, time slows down so you can enjoy every second. It sounds incredible, but how is it that I never noticed uh, noticed it before? Uh, we mere mortals are oblivious to such things, but let us now speak of another matter. My chief advisor, Archmage Shivarius, has argued that with the help of uh, this hourglass, one can make some kind of a hole in, a, in space and perhaps even stop time itself. He promises to go to Bill Gilbert and secure his assistance in overcoming the demons. I am none too knowledge I'm not too knowledgeable probably uh, about magical artifacts and do not understand how in a single day one could make such a but I ask you to hand him the clock of time and prepare yourself for the voyage to Morocco. Agreed? Well, I will certainly talk to Archmage Varius. As for sending me to Morocco, we'll talk about that later, Father. So that's the conversation with King Mark. Now we go to Shivarius. Well, have you spoken with your father, your majesty? It surely was not by accident that the reaper, uh, which is the spirit of time, uh, entrusted you with the clock. The guard said that he could uh, see through time. Uh, we kind of skip these options. Don't really care about that. Uh, father asked me to give you the clock of time. Yes, very good. I require the aid of, the, of its magic to return Bill Gilbert to us. He is our final hope. I have no doubt that he could help us, but how will the clock of time enable you to do this? Princess, you'll see it with your own eyes. I ask you to follow me, your highness. With these words, he returns and exits the castle. So we're going to follow him. And now we are in front of the castle. That's him. So let's continue. All right, I'm ready. Give me the clock of time, your highness. And I will... Uh, wait. Can't I go with you to Tina? After all, the clock was left to me. Uh, so in a way, it's not... Uh, is it not my right? First of all, you are the only daughter of the king and heir to the throne. In the order, uh, in the other world, you would quickly become a burden to me. Forgive me, your highness, but I cannot take you with me. Uh, do not forget what I am, the daughter of gods. Oh, princess, it seems that the gods have turned away from us. I will 
not give you the cog until you explain to me what's going on and what you are doing. Well, Princess, I can only tell you what I understand. You probably know that before Bill Gilbert uh, left on his uh, latest quest, I spoke with the Guardian of Time from uh, his famous chest. The Guardian explained to me that substance... Uh, explain to me the substance of time. These are glasses are the souls of the guardians. Without these receptacles, the guardian is nothing but an amorphous substance incapable of existence in our world. When, a, when one of the hourglasses overflows, the soul of the guardian is reborn. Do you understand? Uh, yes, I think I understand. Please continue. So if you break an hourglass, the sand will cascade into our world, bringing with it, with it a cataclysm. A hole will be torn in time and space, a hole which links our world with the world of the uh, Guardian of Time. I intend to pass through this hole and travel to the other world, which must be where Bill Gilbert is currently. I will find him and return him to our world. And if you do not have enough time to get back, but there's the key, you see. The Guardian is eternal. His soul timeless. When the sand is cast into our world, the whole of, of Darion will also stand outside of time. There will be an inverse whirlpool effect which freezes time in Andoria, using a magic so strong that its power is beyond that of the wildest dreams of any archmage. But the one who breaks the clock receives a brief reprieve from the effect of the whirlpool on the uh, space and time. I will have enough time to search. Uh, that is all. Now give me the clock. What are we waiting for? Let's try. Let us alter space and time. That is, throw the clock of time on the ground. What are you doing, princess? I can read the spell, but I cannot use the portal if you... The mage is caught by surprise. The clock hits the ground and disappears, only to reappear above the mage's head. Shivarius raises his staff, trying to catch the artifact, but it is too late. A strong force pierces the space all around you, and the tips of your fingers sting, as if, you, as if the threads of a marionette puppet had suddenly been pulled uh, from them. Only in this case it is time itself being wrenched, wrenched away. Do not worry, Archmage. I will go for Bill Gilbert. Read the spell until time stops. So there is the cast. Doom etched on his face. Shivarius shakes his head and plants his staff firmly on the ground. With each second, his movements slow, but yet he stands his ground. A beam of light suddenly flares out of his staff. On the spot where minutes earlier a fountain flowed, a black hole now forms, wrenching open a magical portal. Everything changes, time collapses into a simple moment, trapping everything in a cycle that repeats again and again. Everything that is but you. So, that is the beginning of the game. Now we can jump into the portal. Do you really want to enter the portal leading to another world? Yes, because there is nothing else for us to do. As I said, the talking that we can do here in the other buildings is not relevant to us at all. Uh, and here we are entering the world of Tiena, where our search for Bill Gilbert begins. Another world, very nearly the same as your own, but this is a place the portal has sent you. It seems that you are in the square of a quiet sleepy town. The square is quiet, uh, deserted, and all is serene. The silence is suddenly shattered by a loud pop, the sound of the portal closing after you. You'll need to figure out where you are and see if you can find help. So here we are. And um, now, I was actually thinking about this for quite a while, if I should just play from here without any preparations, or if I want to like pre-play the first few minutes and check if there are if there is one thing that I kind of need for the early game uh, to be able to like get through to the mid game without losses and since that's the goal of the game i don't want to just finish it i want to finish it without losing a single unit um i decided to actually create a save file that starts exactly at this moment but i already know that there is one thing that is important. I need in one specific shop to be one, to be a certain amount of one kind of a unit. That's basically what I know here. That's what I needed to know. Is it cheating? Uh, probably not. I mean, if I played from the 
uh, or without the save, and I found out that I don't have the unit, or it, it's not available in the amount that I need, uh, I would have to reload, so I just saved us some time. Okay, so here we are, the same moment, now we enter the castle of King Frederick. Here he is. Welcome, stranger. It was reported to me that you came out of nowhere, right onto the main square of my castle. Who are you, and what kind of person is able to enter my castle without passing the guard? Were you sent by Dominion to assassinate me, the true king of Verona, Frederick II? Your Majesty, I'm Princess Amelia. I have just arrived here from the world of Endoria. I urgently need to find a knight by the name of Bill Gilbert. What? You come from another world, Andoria? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I have heard the name. Interesting, interesting. A knight you say you, you are looking for. Do you mean that you are princess by blood and the name of your father, your highness? My father's name is Mark Lonor, the king of Darien, the kingdom of humans in our world. However, it is said that I am not his natural daughter. Legend has it that the gods send me to the king in answer to his prayers. The gods send you a daughter of gods from another world? I wonder. Has the angel told the truth? This is incredible. We have to confirm this. By the gods, where is the box? The king jumps from the throne, scurries away and returns shortly, having retrieved a small chest, which uh, he then opens carefully. Inside, there lies a wonderful stone of heavenly colors. Princess, do you know what this is? No, but its color and shape are most pleasing. How barbaric. The shape and color of the stone is of no, no matter. This is the Stone of Courage, one of the eight stones of Tiana, key's divine power. If you are the one foretold by the prophecy of the angel, then you must awaken the stone. Come, lay your hand upon it, child. If you speak the truth, it will come to life and give you its strength. However, if you have lied, then you will simply turn to stone and join the ranks of those unfortunate imposters who have come before you. The king... Return, uh, the king turns and makes a sweeping gesture, indicating the numerous, uh, numerous statues, male and female alike, which currently decorate the throne room. All I say is pure truth, so touch the stone. As soon as you place your hand on the stone, it lights up with a ghostly glow, before suddenly shattering into a million uh, shining sparks. The sparks flare up, then slowly die down. As they fade, you feel an Illuminating power and clarity of thought shining from within. The incredible stone has accepted you. It has made you its keeper. The prophecy of the angel has come true. I, the stone's keeper? I don't understand what just happened. And to where did the stone disappear? After you have collected all eight stones of Tiana, you will be as the gods, capable of stopping the chaos and ready to fulfill the words of uh, scriptures. But fear not, I, King Frederick II, will aid you in this quest. I will tell you where the remaining seven stones are kept and will help you obtain them. By the gods, this is a great day. The years of waiting are finally behind us. First, I wish to present you with a royal gift. I am sure he will love you and you will become the best friends. I love gifts. Oh, gifts. Where is it? Or where is he? Speak with Captain Bogart, the chief of my guards, and he will explain everything to you. I hope you like surprises. I do not fully understand what to do, but I am sure that in your uh, quest my gift will be a great help to you. You will see. Also, I will give you a list uh, detailing where and from whom you can collect the other stones of Tiana. At the Stone of Courage you already have, and the Stone of Hope you can find here on the beer. Read through the list. Feel free to ask any questions you might have. I decree that you are to be given free access to my lands and may pass wherever you please under my protection and without delay. Okay, so we gain the stone of the gods. Um, with the, this stone, the gods of strange world acknowledge you and imbue with a portion of their strength. They give us 20 leadership. I'll probably have to talk briefly about the mechanics of the game, at least some of them, uh, but we can do that in the second. So that's that. Uh, we brought with us Portrait of the Night, a painting of Bill Gilbert that gives plus one morale to all human units. So we can equip that, doesn't really matter, but may as well. Uh, next, what do we do? I guess we talk to, actually, no, we leave some units behind. We will need them for a while. And talk to Captain Bogard. Halt, who goes there? Speak your name. Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Darion and Andoria. Uh, 
You can save your fairy tales about how you are a princess for uh, from from some uh, for some other fool before you stands the chief of the royal guard now you weren't here a moment ago so speak up who are you that's my chief concern for all i know you might pose a danger now speak your name my name is amelia king frederick sent me uh, to you to receive my gift and so you might show me uh, my ship princess amelia apologize for my tact lessness a royal gift a pet dragon awaits you a pet dragon i cannot it cannot be by royal decree you are to receive a dragon no less let me open the gate for you now go to the f uh, farm and speak with martha she will explain everything you need to know pick your dragon and return to me for further instructions all right captain i'll be right back so you have to talk to martha here but before that there are a few things we want to pick up here a rune, a flag that will give us a little bit more leadership, and then here there should be a chest that we can dig up and get two scrolls of fear, which are completely useless. Uh, okay, let's talk about the. Actually, no, let's uh, get the dragon, then we're gonna talk about the mechanics. I don't want to spend too much time, uh, I'll, but I probably should at least explain the basics. Um, your name is Amelia, isn't it? Well, my goodness, don't you look every inch a true princess. I think you'll enjoy the royal gift. Just you take a look at these wee dragon cups. You can pick any of them, and whichever one you choose will grow to become your staunch friend and will protect you in times of danger. Go on, take your time. Is there one in particular that strikes your fancy? So they have different colors, and each color does a different thing and starts with a different ability. The best one is probably the blue one that gives initiative to animals and more importantly dragons um and i probably should pick that one up but i won't i will pick um the second one the red one that gives extra rage because as a mage we will be quite rage starved and um i don't know i just like this one more even though the first one is probably stronger stronger especially for the late game um so let's do that then we have um violet one that gives plus one attack which is completely irrelevant oh and by the way the ability they have we will eventually get all of them each dragon will get all of them uh it's just about which ability they start with and then we have a green one that would give intelligence would be horrible for a mage but one intelligence in the end doesn't really mean that much um plus one defense from the bronze one Year 11 plus 2 crit is interesting, uh, but I'm not 100% sure to what exactly that crit applies, if it's like all units or just the dragon abilities, which I'm not even sure if they can crit actually. Um, so it's probably like <clears throat> the army, uh, which is not bad, but 2%, I mean, not that influential. It, it could be an option, but it would be definitely weaker than these two. And then we have plus five mana from the last one, which also is maybe interesting early, but later becomes basically irrelevant. So let's pick the red one. Good choice. Care for him and he will always answer your call and protect you too. Some thieves climbed into the farm a while back and we only learned about it a month later when we discovered the remains of some molten armor. You can uh, think up a name for him. I just know them by the color and their, of their scales. It makes it easier for me and that way I don't get too attached. Okay. Uh, so now you have uh, your own pet dragon. For the moment, it's quite it's quite small, but a few short centuries from now, this cute little thing will grow into a fierce, uh, into a very fierce dragon. You can see your new pet in the bottom left corner of the character. Blah blah blah. Uh, we'll talk about that. The name I will use the name that I usually use for myself, and. Um, there we go. Now we can talk briefly about the mechanics in the game. So let's start here. We have gold. We'll be just picking that up, getting it as a reward for fights. Uh, we use that to buy units, spells, and uh, items. Then we have rage. You accumulate rage while you are fighting. When, you t uh, when your units take damage or deal damage, you slowly build up rage. And then the dragon that we just got can uh, has... Uh, nine different abilities that we 
discover one by one as we progress through the game and we use rage to like activate and use these abilities and then we have mana that uh, we use to cast spells simple uh, here is the inventory there is actually quite a few things uh, uh, so let's go through everything uh, this is experience leadership really important each unit has some base leadership so when we check our peasants uh, one peasant has leadership of five we have 134 uh, leadership so that means we can have up to 134 divided by five uh, peasants so that would be 26 at this point we only have 20 because that's what we started with but we can have up to 26 uh, the more leadership we have the stronger our army is because the more units we can have so it's quite important to um, like build up the leadership as much as possible then we have attack uh, determines the effectiveness of hero attacks heroes attacks it's actually not heroes attacks it's heroes units attacks uh, if the attack exceeds the target defense the target suffers more damage at maximum the damage increases to 300 percent so this was the trick in the first game that you build up like ridiculous amounts of attacks and combined with certain units you could you could almost one shot anything I don't think that works anymore uh, because they added a cap to it, the 300%. Uh, then we have defense, determines the effectiveness of the hero's defense. If the hero's defense exceeds the aggressor's attack, then the damage suffered will decrease accordingly. At maximum, the hero will take only one third damage. Once again, it's not the hero taking damage, the hero's units taking damage. And then we have intelligence or intellect, which is by far most important for us as a mage. Um, Affect, affects damage caused by magic and the power of spells. Uh, each point increases damage by 5%. Every 7 point increase, the, increase this by additional 15%. Every 20 points increase the duration of certain spells by, uh, by one round. So there are the important thresholds, every 7 points and then every 20 points. Um, especially the first 20 points are quite important because the duration of certain spells can make... Uh, fighting much more like comfortable the second most important that for us probably is uh, defense to give some tankiness to our units and we'll be mostly killing everything by a proper use of magic combined with dragon abilities uh, so our units are there to just hold for as long as possible and to take as little damage as possible and we don't really care about their attack like at all or very little uh, we went through these then awards um, this is actually quite important and it's like rewards for achieving some specific goals in the game it basically rewards you for uh, doing something specific first one grand strategy gives you 200 leadership which is quite a lot especially early after we win 10 fights without losses and each of these has three steps so we have this is a um, like grand strategy one then we get grand strategy two that will give us another 300 and then this grand strategy three that will give us another 500 the last one is after like 100 wins without losses and each of these has specific requirements we have a headhunter for killing enemy heroes gives us rage uh, more experience for a dragon after we kill dragons uh, we here we get more experience for the hero after we loot certain amount of treasures uh, plus intelligence after we kill certain amount of orcs uh, more fire and poison damage which is damage over actually it's damage over time and direct damage I think as well after we incinerate or poison certain amount of units trapper uh, after we kill certain amount of units with traps, we start with a trap on the field and this increases up to three and it also increases trap damage. This is a really important one. Guardian Angel gives us gives our unit resistance after using a certain amount of spells that are in the list. Stone Skin, Avenging Angel, Armor of God and Magic Shield. Blind Rage gives us crit chance after we use a certain amount of rage. And the last one is Fire Mage uh, after... We get mana after we use a certain amount of Fire Arrow, Oil Mist, Hell Breath and Fireball spells. Uh, we'll be focusing pretty heavily on some of these early. It's quite important. The early game can be quite difficult and especially Grand Strategy combined with Trapper can help you a lot in the early game. So in some fights we will be just, we'll just make sure the, the, that fights take 
as long as possible so that we can use uh, or that we can get as close to these thresholds as we can in the shortest possible time. You'll see when we started actually playing what I mean by that. Uh, so that's the that's the awards. Then we have the inventory itself. So we have some slots here. Each hero you can play as a warrior, as a, as a like tactician or strategist or something like that, and the mage. And that decides like what kind of items you can equip. We have a helmet, weapon. Then we have either armor or dress. If you are playing, for example, as a warrior, I don't think you can equip dresses. You can only equip armor. Then we have boots, uh, regalia or artifact, shield or artifact, uh, belt and gloves. And this one is artifact. Uh, so that's that. Here's our army. This is the inventory for items that we are not using. Currently, we don't have any. And then we have our abilities or like a skill tree, let's say, that has three, mm, like three schools or th three different, I don't know how to call them, s types of skills, might skills, mind skills, and magic skills. So this would be for a warrior, this will be for the tactician, and this would be for the uh, or main focus for the warriors, tactician, and for the mate. So of course our main focus will be here uh, to to activate them or to learn these abilities, we need runes. You'll be finding runes on the ground and we'll be getting them as we level up. Um, so we'll be focusing on the mage tree, but there are some quite important skills from the other trees as well that we want to get soon. Specifically, we want to get to anger. We want to increase our rage from rage control. That's from this tree here. We need to get to glory three as soon as possible to increase our leadership. And in magic, we want to go to transmute. We want to go to higher magic and we, we want to go to thesis. There's a lot that we need here. We need basically everything. Distortion magic two or even three is also quite important. And here we can see through these arrows, we can see the requirements, so we can't pick order magic until we have both wisdom and linguistics. Also, each of these skills, abilities, whatever we want to call them, has three levels. So there is a lot to do here. Okay, so that's the description here. Oh. One more thing. Here is our dragon. For now, it's a level one. But when we click on him, you can see his abilities. For now, he has crushing blow and mana accelerator. But there are seven more that he will learn eventually, and they can also be all leveled up uh, to become more powerful and sometimes also add some utility to them. So now I covered all of this, and we can also actually play for a little bit, I guess. So let's talk to Captain Bogard. So, what do you think of your new dragon? You are pleased with him now that truly is a right royal gift, don't you agree? Well, I too have been busy. Your ship is equipped and awaits you at the dock. True, uh, the boatsway has run off. I don't quite know what to make of that. I'm afraid it will be necessary for you to find your own navigational charts. But in my official capacity, I must ask if you wish to be trained in our guild of warriors. Now, this is a tutorial. Um, I don't really need it to learn the game, but if you do the tutorial, you get level 2 uh, in the end. And that's quite important, because that gives us runes and some extra leadership earlier than we would otherwise get it. So I will go through the tutorial and I will use it to just quickly explain how the, like the, how the fighting works and how spells works and things like that. So... Let's go in. Oh, well, we welcome all manner of warriors who wish to enter the guild, uh, the Warriors Guild, and we are happy to offer you the same training. Our basic training includes a crash course in the foundations of magic, learning how to select equipment, handle weaponry, and finally how to command an army. So, let's go in. Okay, I have arranged everything with the guild instructors. Of course, your name is not on the list, but I'll squeeze you in for a quick training session. Now, let's enter the guild and travel down into the dungeon, where we train all our new recruits. Master Terminal will explain everything to you. So, follow him. I won't here read all of the tutorials and the dialogues with the, uh, with the, like, the instructor. It's not important. It basically, game explains how it works. So... Uh, if you want to read it, you can pause the game, but it's really not that important. Um, so here we need to find some basic gear. The game teaches us that you can dig up 
items if you find them you will see this beam and if you dig there you'll find the chest with something in it for uh, or in the tutorial it's always uh, always a sword and a shield so we can equip that here we can see the stats on the item plus one defense so if you remove it we have defense zero if we add it we have defense one pretty simple uh, so that's the first step then step two here he will tell us that we can recruit new units there is a magical crystal heal that we will pick up and at this stage so that sometimes we can find allied troops on the map it's very rare and not relevant at all important thing is that we got five paladins here who are really strong and that will allow us to go through this without losses we want to get rid of the peasants because the AI is smart enough to focus on your weak units, so they would be focusing on the peasants, and it's impossible to keep all of them alive, <clears throat> which of course is our goal, not losing units. So we'll only be doing this with the paladins, there is another chest hidden, so let's take that, 520 gold. Uh, third step, so here we will learn the basics of fighting. <clears throat> We can pause the game on the map if we need to, so it is relevant sometimes um, to be able to pause the game here, it doesn't matter, but there is the option. Uh, so let's attack these guys, they're really weak, they can't do anything to the Paladin. Um, so here we can see the turn order, these numbers show in what order the units move we move last so they all move and now is our turn um these units for now i won't go through what they are doing it's not relevant here uh and here we have a static object it's neutral and this one just shoots lightning around it the grayed out tiles show how far it can reach so we don't want to stand inside of range of this. Uh, in the early game they are quite weak, but later they become quite annoying and uh, strong. So um, then they become actually quite high priority to just get rid of. Or use strategically against the, the enemy. That's also an option. So... What do we want to do here? Uh, we want to use our spellbook, specifically our flaming arrow, and there are two different things. Slow and flaming arrows, uh, arrow are spells that we know, that we learned, and we use mana, we can see how much mana we use to cast them. And then there are scrolls, which are one-time thing, uh, if we use them to cast, or we can use them to, to, to learn the spells, and then just use mana and cast it wherever we want. Uh, using scrolls doesn't cost mana, but it costs you the scroll. So you have to decide if you want to use the scroll or if you want to learn a spell from the scroll. Um, if you have only one, of course. We have fear twice, so we can use one and then use the other one to learn the spell. I guess you get the, the idea. To learn spells or to upgrade spells, each spell has three tiers or levels. Um, we use magic crystals, so to learn a spell we need a certain amount of crystals and we also need to know the proper level of magic school the spell belongs to. So to learn healing we would have to know level 1 of order magic and it would cost us one crystal to learn the spell. It's the same for all spells, but the more powerful the spells become the more crystals they cost of course. Um, and uh, we don't have unlimited capacity for scrolls. This is the capacity that we have. Um, okay, so here. Remember one of the awards was to use flaming arrow, a flaming arrow a certain amount of times. I think it's 70 times and then we get 5 mana. So we want to start working on that as soon as possible. Uh, I'm not sure if we need to kill something with it, but I think it's just used the spell that many times. So let's do that. We can move forward, avoid the lightning damage. It's not really relevant, but we can do that. Uh, oh, and I should probably talk about the units, how they work. So each unit has certain stats. Uh, attack, defense, so how much how much damage it deals, how tanky it is, initiative, 
decides when the unit of course moves in the turn there is no rng element in this the higher initiative the earlier the unit goes uh speed which means how many tiles on the map it can move per turn then a chance for a crit uh actually damage uh, this indicates the amount of damage the creature inflicts with its basic attack the archer's basic attack is the ranged attack the only uh, they only inflict half as much damage as their melee so we here we can see how much damage we actually like do and how much health the unit has so the, we currently have 135 uh, hit points out of 200 maximum and it's for five units so we have five paladins each of the paladins has uh, has 200 hit points. You can see it here. Troops health is 935. That 935 is the whole stack. 200 is one paladin. Uh, if it drops to zero, we lose one paladin. We'll have four left. We don't want that. We don't want. We want to go through this game without losing a single unit. Not just a single stack. A single unit. Uh, each, no, not each unit, but some units have special abilities that are down here. It doesn't really matter for the Paladin. We won't be using them, we won't be needing them. And then there are like passive abilities. Uh, steel armor, each unit has some, each unit has different ones. So here we can see that Paladins have high physical damage resistance. They have mastery every time the warrior receives damage. The base damage of the of the troop increases by 30% up to a total of 90%. This does not include when the troop is damaged by enemy counterattack or the effect of spells. It's true believer, uh, the presence of the undead in the army doesn't lower their morale and resists necromancy and it's a holy warrior uh, warriors of the light are blessed in their fight against evil being granted protection from magical damage and the capacity to inflict increased damage to demons and undead uh, one more thing actually two more things there is also morale which affects the effectiveness of troops so the higher morale the, the more effective they are and then we have um, uh, these slots here where you can see the buffs and debuffs that are active on the unit so we currently are frozen which decreases our, our movement speed and we are burning which is a damage over time effect it burns us for a little bit every turn uh, it can become pretty nasty but for now it's basically irrelevant it does only a few points of damage and also how long it will stay two turns on the burn three turns on the freeze so that's the units and now, as we are taking damage, we are building up rage. And another thing that uh, we want to focus on is our dragon. We need to level him up. With every action the dragon does, he gets experience. So we want to make sure we do as many things as possible uh, with the dragon every fight. And also, as we are using Rage, uh, we are also work working on one of the awards. So we have to make sure that we are doing something. For now, we basically just have the crushing... I, maybe I should actually wait for, for Mana Accelerator. That might be better. Let's wait for the Mana Accelerator. Uh, attack. We should be able to get to 8 quite easily. Yeah, we are already on 7. And now we are on 8. Because I think the Mana Accelerator will give us... Uh, will give us more experience, plus it will help us replenish mana, which will be quite annoying early until we get some skills to speed that up. So we place it on the field. It will be placed on the field in the form of this orb. And when we enter the tile, we pick it up, we get plus 7 mana and another action point. That's like the side effect of, of this dragon's ability it not just gives mana it also gives it also gives action points so now we can use flaming arrow get rid of him so it's a third flaming arrow and now we have five rage so we can end the fight by using a crashing blow and be as effective as possible here we have one no losses on our side we got gold that you get every time after a fight and we, we got lucky well i think it's guaranteed here but sometimes you can get also items after fight we got 14 experience out of this so when we fill up fill up this bar we will get a level up um, so that's how fighting works we may as well equip the helmet 
Uh, this one is actually pretty strong. It reduces attack by one, but gives plus four defense, which is a lot this early. And that's what we need. As I said, we don't really care about attack. We care about defense and intellect. So this is a good helmet early. Uh, we have to talk to this guy again, tell him that we managed to win. We can loot this ur urn, which doesn't give us anything, unfortunately. I don't think there are any more items anywhere around here. Now, this guy will tell us about magic. Once again, we can skip that. I already talked about it, how spells and scrolls work. So, we'll just go through this as quickly as possible. And then there are some scrolls around him that we want to pick up. New spells, precision... Don't really care about that. Call of Nature. Don't care about that either. More precision. Uh, and there should be a chest here that we dig up and get more precision even. So we don't care about those. Precision can be useful. Uh, as you play the game, you don't get the same stuff every time. Um, the, the, the like the items that you find in shops uh, get randomized the the units that you can buy in shops get randomized and there are like set pieces uh set pieces uh, gear uh, wait uh, what's what's the what's the name there are sets of gear that if you get lucky and find a full specific set it can even affect like which units you want to use so precision can sometimes be maybe useful if you get a set that makes your range units like really strong then precision becomes relevant but that's not the way we want to go uh so that's why i'm saying that precision is useless to me i'm planning to do something different something that's not dependent on getting lucky and finding a specific set it's not guaranteed for you to find these sets so we can't like play around it and again later you'll see what i mean when we find these sets um okay here last set this is like the final final challenge before we end the uh, the tutorial and we'll be fighting uh fighting these triants we need anything no oh what's attack and this is the fight where, where our uh, peasants would have no chance of surviving like at least not all of them because of the royal thorn here that's range unit with 360 health um, so that would definitely kill some of the peasants okay sometimes you can find these chests on the field and you really want to loot them because most of the time there there is a little bit of gold in them, but there can also be spell scrolls. They can be there can be magic crystals, and the most valuable loot is um, there can be runes, and the runes are so 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 important. Uh, so when you see these chests you definitely want to try anything you can to, to get those chests. Of course, since we want to play without losses, there are some limitations for us when it comes to chests. But we will definitely try to get all of them. Uh, okay, so here we start once again with the flaming arrow. Uh, because this is a plant, it's actually vulnerable to fire. So it will do, or the, the flaming arrow will do double damage. So it's 160 instead of 80. All we can do is move forward. Now, the Treants, they have this ability to, like, spit, I don't know what it is, like, wasps at you. Which is quite strong, but again, there is just one Treant here, one Treant here, so they don't do that much. And the, the Royal Thorn can, I think the ability is called Propagate. Um, it can spit, like, a seed on the ground, and it grows... Uh, Thorn Hunters or Thorns. Thorn Hunters are ranged and Thorns are melee. Uh, the more Royal Thorns there are in the stack, the more of these small ones grow up. Uh, and this is the unit that I wanted to make sure that we will have access to because they are so broken. Okay, next. We want to keep going after the Thorn. And we want to pick up the chest. Now we have 15 rage, so let's make sure the thorn doesn't do anything anymore. Finish him off. Pick up the chest. 
and we get Scroll of Haste, so that's a new spell, which actually is relevant. Oh, and these small buggers have one-time ability that they can propagate on corpses that they are on the field. So eventually you can start like an infinite chain and fill the whole battlefield with them if you want to. Um... Oh, by the way, the Treants are plants as well, so they are also vulnerable to fire. So here the, the Flaming Arrow is just insanely effective. Uh... Because this gives us more, more experience, I think we're going to be using the, the Mana Orb, finish of the end. Oh, and uh, each unit can attack once per turn, unless you use some kind of spells that give you another attack. And they can counter attack once per turn, un unless they have the ability, I think that's called Retaliatory, uh, that gives them the ability to attack every time they they get attacked uh so um yeah just just mentioning that that you can't counter attack like every single time uh, now flaming arrow mana accelerator Kill that. Good show. He can't grow any more thorns because he already used the ability. These small ones can only do it once. The big one can do it infinite amount of times. It just takes like three turns for the ability to reload. Um, hit that. Use the mana accelerator again. Is he gonna go for melee attack? No. <coughs> well, it doesn't matter. We finish him off with another flaming arrow. And that's the end of the of the tutorial. Again, we got gold, and this time we got seed. Uh, some units, um, mostly you you recruit your units in shops some of the units can be hatched if you find they're either eggs or seeds but it's only a few and we don't really need those except for dragons in the late game you can find dragon eggs and hatch dragons from them so those are relevant but uh, yeah dragons that's mostly a late game thing and here is it here no we have to leave the um uh, the training rounds to get our level up so on every level you get a little bit of extra leadership this increases with every level and a certain amount of runes as a mage we will be getting the blue runes mostly and then I think the second most amount will be for the green runes and then only a few red runes so we have to be careful with those and again with if you play different class you are getting different amounts of each type so if you are playing a warrior you are playing you are getting mostly the red ones if you are playing the strategist or whatever it's called uh, you are getting uh, the the green ones mostly <clears throat> and this is why we wanted to do the tutorial I really wanted to uh, to get the level up. Uh, so that's that. And now there's also one thing why I decided to leave some units behind. It's not important, but it works. If you leave units behind and finish the tutorial, you get them again. So we now have twice as many uh, forest fairies and uh, the, the lake dragonflies. We won't be using them, but it just works this way. Okay, <clears throat> we can sell the seeds. It's a little bit of gold, but early we have very little. Plus, on the impossible difficulty, we won't be getting that much gold. So every little bit actually helps. Now we can talk to the king again. I'm glad to see you. I'm sure you will find the other stones of the gods and fulfill the prophecy. Indeed, it seems clear that you were sent by the gods themselves. Uh, I'm looking for a man by the name of Bill Gilbert. Have you perhaps heard of him? Uh, is he too of your world? I'm positive that no one with such a strange sounding name has appeared on the beer. He must be elsewhere. Okay, I have many questions for you, Majesty. 
Um, I'm sure, Amelia, that you must have many questions you would like to ask. After all, this world is as new to you as it's uh, to a newborn baby. So I urgently need to find Bill Gilbert and return to Andoria. I will go through all of this because this is actually quite important for the main story. Uh, I understand that you are desperate to find the knight, but I am completely at a loss as to how I could help you with your search. Why should I look for the, these stones of power? Fate has sent me here with a different purpose. You, uh, Your judgment is incorrect, I'm afraid. Only the gods can know your destiny. Can you be certain that you, a mere human, truly knows their plans? Once you have gathered all the stones of this world, you will have the power to awaken Tana herself and have your greatest wish granted. You can also put an end to the war that ravages our world. So let's learn more about this prophecy of the angel. The old angel came down from heavens and told us that the stones were a gift from the gods given to us that uh, we may awaken Tena in times of chaos. However, the only person capable of gathering the stones would be a child of the gods, an envoy from another world. For this reason, neither I nor anyone else dare touch the stones, and everyone foolish enough to try has been petrified. Not far from here lies the Temple of Hope. They can tell you more about the prophecy of the angel that I, uh, than I can. Suppose I gather all the stones, what will happen next? A miracle, no less. You will receive the power of the gods, a power strong enough to awaken contain herself. The salvation or destruction of the entire world will be in your hands, the fate of all the people of Tiena. So that's that. Now let's learn about the island. I will leave this option uh, for last. The Beer Island is on the southwestern borders of Tena. The waters between here and Verona are under the sway of pirates and smugglers. No ship can feel safe in these waters, which are home to a population of criminals and refugees who have migrated towards the Beer in search of freedom or a better life. Those who love the life of a pirate or a smuggler choose to settle on a scarlet wind or rusty anchor. Um, the Stoners of Tena. I would like to know all about them. Long ago, in ages past, the gods created the eight stones and presented them to the people of Tiena. How and why only the gods in their infinite wisdom know the full answer. However, the true purpose of the stones was revealed to us by the angel who foretold that when all eight are finally gathered together, they will awaken Tiena herself and bring peace to humans, elves, dwarves. It appears that the fourth stone, the stone of courage, was in the keeping of my father and passed on to me the day I was born. The three remaining stones were seized by Demenian. The stone of hate the usurper kept for himself, while the stone of rage and the stone of knowledge were given to the lizard Menagtahu and the dark elf Zilgadis as payment for their assistance in seizing the crown. It is up to you to force their return. And what of the other stones? Other stones have been held in sacred temples, dedicated to their preservation for thousands of years. Here on the beer, there is Temple of Hope, which houses the Stone of Hope. There is also the Temple of Love, in the middle of the bridge that connects Verona and Montera. The Stone of Sadness is uh, in the Temple of Tekron, guarded by dwarves. And at Uzala, you, find, you will find the Temple of Joy, that is, if the goblins can be trusted. And now, please tell me about yourself, Your Majesty. Of course, you should know the whole truth. After all, you will have to contend with my enemies in all order to fulfill your mission. But it is a dark story about the king condemned to exile without family, crown or kingdom. Uh, I'm the only son of King Helmut, the ruler of Verona. When I was about 10 years old, a mere child, I lost everything that, I, that a person could lose. The first advisor, Demenian, enacted a terrible plot against my father and chose the perfect day for this coup. My birthday. My father had arranged a gala celebration for the citizens. The main square of the city was filled with festivities, tables groaning with food, jugglers and musicians entertaining the crowds. Happy festivities brutally cut short. The violent massacre unleashed upon those uh, festooned streets was indeed horrendous. Images of that desecration shall haunt me to the end of my days, and so ended the reign of my family. It was no accident that this all took place the very day I turned 10 years old. This was a date of great significance to the entire kingdom, the day my father intended to officially declare me the future heir to the throne. Our whole family, along with all the important councillors, ministers, uh, and the first royal sorcerers were gathered at the town square to witness this event. But 
uh, this auspicious day was to be marked by a very special privilege. My inauguration was to be witnessed by Ktahu. This huge lizard man was a former ruler of the marshes of Rea, but has since been held captive by our nation for over a thousand years. His presence at the ceremony had been suggested by our first adva uh, first royal advisor Demenian and my father had agreed, believing that it would enhance my uh, credibility among the people. Moreover, we had nothing to fear, because uh, as our first archmage Teoron explained, the shackles on the lizardmen were indestructible. When this great lizardman giant was brought forth, the common people in the square shuddered in fear. So awful and terrifying was his form. My father commanded everyone to remain calm, and so the ceremony continued. Moments later, acting upon a signal from Demenian, the second archmage of the kingdom, Zilgadis, read a strange incantation unknown to anyone, which broke the shackles binding Tahu. The lizardmen roared, and guards rushed in all, direct uh, all directions. The archmage Teoron attempted to restrain him, but was turned into a sheep, so he could only bleed helplessly at the coming chaos. The conspirator Zilgadis was the, uh, that day at the height of his power. Having gained his freedom, the lizardman didn't delay in destroying his target, the royal family. Meanwhile, the Menin's people turned their attention to destroying father's royal guard. <coughs> Excuse me. I remember my poor mother fainting, but father remained calm, rapidly taking measures of the situation, signaling to my personal bodyguard, I have to grab a drink, holy crap, that's a lot of reading. Signaling to my personal bodyguard, Christopher Lane, my father's first thought was to secure my safe, safe evacuation. As I ran, I looked back to see father, uh, standing protecting, uh, protectively by my mother, in his hands a huge two-handed sword, which he swung fiercely at the enormous claw of Ktahu, which was bearing down on them. I was desperate to return to my father's aid, but my bodyguard picked me up and didn't let me go until I was safely deposited on the deck of a ship. He sent me here to Debir, to old castle Altstadt. When I turned 16, the local refugees officially recognized me as their ruler and sole heir to the throne of Verona. Yet all this time, while I was in exile, New Verona was being ruled by the usurper and murderer Demenian, supported by a corrupt government of cronies and, tra uh, and traitors. Now you know my story. Is there anything else you wish to know? What happened to the conspirators uh, and your kingdom? Are they still trying to kill you? The conspirators carved up Tiana, the cold killer Ktahu slung back to his native Reha. They say that my father cut off the beast's right arm before he himself was struck down. Zalgadis went to Alon, where, rumors has it, he explores dark forbidden magic while, subse uh, why, while sequestered in the impregnable mirror tower. And New Verona, these past years, has been ruled by the imposter Demenian, who governs with an iron fist suppressing all uprisings. Many flee from him, but the refugees are also infiltrated with um, uh, his murderers and spies. That is why we must also stay alert. Uh, tell me about the conspirators who killed your father. Which of these three villains you wish to hear about? So let's start with Ktahu. He is the ruler of Reha, a land of spam, swam, swamps and home to hordes of furious lizardmen. They are fierce but intelligent animals of great power. His people believe him to be immortal and claim he has lived for many thousands of years. Indeed, it was thousands of years ago when Ketahu came to New Verona, the human capital, demanding he should enter into alliance with him. We should enter alliance with him. Uh, this was no treaty of diplomacy, but a threat... Uh, from a bully. Naturally, we attempted to send him away, but then the monster went on rampage. Many died before the mages managed to freeze him, and so trapped in ice, Ktahu spent more than a thousand years until Zelgadis finally released him. Now, the lord of the lizard man has gone home to his people, though I'm certain that Ktahu will return to take revenge. Now, let's talk about Zilgadis, I think we will leave the man at last. Zilgadis is an outcast. The elves drove him from alone for studying forbidden magic. In fact, he is called Dark Elf because upon his body and soul there is in inscribed a magical indelible mark, a testimony to his name, to his shame. Zilgadis became a pariah for having violated ancient taboos, ultimately causing him to flee to Verona. My father gladly took in such a mighty magician and even accepted him to 
to the court. Um, how could he have known that he was welcoming a poisonous snake? In all likelihood, the man probably lured Zilgadis with promises of the stone of knowledge, a most valuable prize for any mage, especially for a dark elf. Now I should imagine that Zilgadis is back in Elon, uh, taking vengeance upon his kinsmen through the power of the stone. And last one, Demenian. Demenian was a friend and advisor to King Helmut, or at least he pretended to be. However, he won his position as advisor under strange circumstances. He uncovered the conspiracy against the crown and saved my father from a grueling death by poison. Incredible to think that uh, he then came to overthrow the crown himself. I do not n now believe that the Duke of Delaware really did have evil designs against my father. It seems like that it was all Demenian's evil doings designed to win him the Duke's seat on the council, and now Demenian is king of Verona and my father lies dead. Ah, what a ruthless tyrant in this book. He seems to take pleasure in tormenting his people. The whole of Verona cries out as he crushes it beneath his heel. So that's all that we can learn from Frederick at this point. So we can leave and here, this is how the shops usually look like. Well, usually they are smaller because this is like a let's say, a one of the main castles, so there are a few more items, and there will be more and more items as you progress through the game. For now, we have these gloves, minus one attack, plus eight mana, which is not bad at all, as I said. We don't care about attack, but eight mana is pretty decent. Fortunately, thousand gold is quite a lot of money for us at the, at the moment. Dragon Slayer Swords, sword, plus five attack, plus 50% attack against dragons. Eventually, we will want to buy this, but it's 45,000, so we can forget about that for a while. And then we have a Chieftain's Belt, which gives 100 leadership. At this point, that's a lot of leadership. And gives a, a plus five attack to robbers, murderers, sea dogs, and pirates. We won't be using those units, but 100 leadership by itself is decent. But again, uh. 4,200 gold, we can't really afford that, and we won't be able to afford that for a while, because we'll be buying other things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so that's that. Don't need to do anything else. Next, what we want to do is probably talk to Bugard again, because he will give us some quests. But I think we're going to do that next time. This was um, a lot of reading, a lot of explaining, but it was just the first episode, so more like an introduction. Um, I know that for some of you, this wasn't necessary, you know these games, but... I think that, or at least I hope, there will also be some people watching who don't know these games and may actually learn about them and maybe even try them about, uh, for themselves. These are great games. These are one of the, some of the best uh, RPG games with incredibly like deep, uh, like the the strategic, the turn-based combat. It's the combat is just amazing. Um, so I hope that. Uh, some of you might try these games as well. And yeah, we'll continue next time. As I said here. And we will also travel a little bit. Because before we, we start fighting or anything. There are a few things that we need to do. To make the game easier for us. Once again, I repeat. We want to go without losses. So there are some things that we kind of have to do. To be able to get through the early game without losing units before we get to the dragons and everything when it becomes a little bit easier not losing them so uh, we will next time we'll be running around a little bit picking up items and doing some quests but yeah that will be next time so i hope that you like this episode. I hope that you are not disappointed with the choice of the game for the series. I've been looking for something new, for some for a game newly released, but for a while I wasn't able to find anything that I would really enjoy playing. So I decided to go with an old game. Uh, once again, I hope it's not uh, a disappointment. And um, I hope that you're going to join me for the next episode again. Until then, have a good time. Bye-bye.